Welcome to the Little Apple, Manhattan, Kansas, where the Wildcats of Kansas State open Big 12 play tonight against the Texas Longhorns. What a time it is to be a fan of college basketball. Big 12 play begins tonight. Texas Tech, West Virginia, they're locked in a close one in Morgantown on ESPN2. It's Oklahoma at Kansas. What a matchup early in the season. And on ESPN News, you can see Iowa State in Stillwater against Oklahoma State. Fourth side at Bramlage Coliseum alongside the former All-American Robbie Hummel. I'm Chucky Kemp. Expectations, a word you can throw around a lot when talking about Kansas State. So, Robbie, I pose this question to you. With Dean Wade out injured, who's the guy you look to to keep it rolling for Kansas State? Well, I think it has to be Barry Brown. You look at a guy, he's their most experienced player. He's also their best defender, the heart and soul of this team. But with Kamal Stokes, a late scratch into this game, not able to play tonight, it's going to have to be a little bit of everybody. It's got to be Xavier Sneed. It's got to be McCall Maywee, Cartier Jada, a guy that last season when Stokes went out, really stepped up to the plate and upped his level of play. It's going to have to be a little bit of everybody tonight for the Kansas State Wildcats. They host Texas tonight, a team that has followed the lead of their senior guard, Kerwin Roach, both in wins and losses. Well, the numbers right there speak for themselves. When he's played well, Texas has had success in one game. When he's struggled, they haven't. Now, keep in mind, last season, he was a guy that really struggled against Kansas State. You look at his numbers, just six points a game, 17% from the field. We'll see what does he have for Kansas State on the road tonight. Wildcats back home at a rock in Bramlage Coliseum. They blew a 20-point lead in the last 10 minutes against George Mason, only to be bailed out by Kamau Stokes hitting late clutch threes. They won that game by one. Texas controls the tip. Big 12 play in action here in Manhattan. Matt Coleman to the rack to Jackson. Hayes has it blocked, but he's fouled. That would have ended a streak he's on of 18 straight made field goals. Instead, he'll go to the line for two. Jackson Hayes, a guy that hasn't missed since December 9th against Purdue. Really a great first possession there by Shaka Smart's team. A lot of ball movement, the basketball move from side to side. And you get great dribble penetration. Matt Coleman, nice dish off. Get your freshman big guy an easy one early. Jackson Hayes in the starting lineup for just the second time in his career at Texas. Jericho Sims had been the starter, but Sims has been struggling this year. As of late, Jackson Hayes has taken over the starting lineup and played well. On the other side, we talked about no Dean Wade, no Kamau Stokes. So they're a little bit smaller. Sneed will play the four. McCall May Ween at the five spot for Kansas State. And then it's Jada and McGurl who have to come up big for this team with some injuries. Jada to the lane. Fading away, Ositkowski has the rebound, and here comes Texas. Roach thought about the long three. They know they have to defend that pick and, well, pick and roll well, or else Hayes will be on the rim all night. Mitru Long, three from the wing, too strong, there's Hayes. Now they're going to try and reset things. We'll see as this game goes on, when Texas gets deep in the shot clock, they sometimes struggle to score. And you have an offensive rebound, an opportunity to shoot quickly. We'll see, can Texas half-court offense generate quality looks for the Longhorns tonight? Good defense from Kansas State on this possession right now. Coleman trying to get to the rack. Stolen away by McGurl. Here come the Wildcats, and he'll pull it up. And this is going to be the recipe for success. If you're Kansas State tonight, it has to be on the defensive end of the floor. One of the elite defensive units in all of the country. And that's a great sign right there. Cartier Jada uncontested right to the rim. He had some big games for them last year. It's a team that's dealt with injuries over the course of the last two seasons. Mitru Long had a look, passed it up. Roach in the corner, contested three, got it. Erwin Roach just squaring the defender right up there. He was there, but no contest. Hands down at the side. Have to give him as a shooter something to think about. There's an energy about both these teams tonight. We had Texas about a week and a half ago when they hosted Providence, but there's something special about conference play in there, Robbie. Well, it's, it's just a different level. You know, you look at who you're playing, it's, it's Texas, and defense going to be such a big thing in this game. 
Roach turns it over, had an easy bucket. And they're going to say it was an offensive foul trying to fend off the defender. Erwin Roach jumping right through the passing lane. You're going to see right here, they're saying he got him with an off elbow. Not a lot of contact there, a little bit. You see that hand extend. Yeah, that's just unnecessary. No, no need for it. Especially when you're that kind of athlete, you have that kind of speed, just break away from it. It's not needed. Had a chance to take a 7-2 lead. Here's Sneed trying to get it into Mayween. That's a good matchup tonight between those two bigs. And they need more from McCall Mayween. We've seen in spurts he's been very good. But look back to the game against Kansas in the Big 12 tournament last year, or even Vanderbilt. But has to be more consistent. Mayween had a season-high 15 against Vanderbilt. Turnover. Mitri Long just lost the handle. McGurl with Sneed to his left. Right back to McGurl. Contact. Count it. Well, defense going to be the storyline for both of these teams. And if you're Kansas State, you love the fact it's creating offense. Eli Mitri Long mishandles the basketball. And how about the unselfishness? Xavier Sneed giving it up. Really nice interior passing. Gets it back to Mike McGurl. A guy that's this season struggled from the field and three. We'll see, does an easy layup and basket get him going early? Almost a miscue there on the rebound from the free throw, but here comes Texas. Mayween has to recover quickly. That's Courtney Ramey in the game now for Texas. Ramey on the right wing. He drew long. Hayes gives him an option. Ten to shoot. Coleman mid-range jumper ended up with a nice shot. You see the defender right there flying through that passing lane. Matt Coleman able to take advantage and so good in the mid-range. He gets to that lefty floater. More often than not, that's going to mean good things for the Longhorns. We saw in the George Mason game, the first half, Kansas State so good offensively, constantly attacking, great ball movement, moving away from the ball. That's what they are at their best, aren't they? No, when they spread the floor and they, they can get everybody involved, they have had success, but shooting the basketball has been such an issue. There again, Kansas State's defense stepping up to the plate, forcing another Texas turnover. First time out of the game, we'll keep it right here. Texas out to a decent start, 7-4 to four over Kansas State. What have you liked from Texas offensively so far? Well, when they've not turned the basketball over, they have four turnovers right now. They've been able to move the ball from side to side and able to get into the paint some. We've seen Matt Coleman do it. We've also seen Kerwin Roach able to knock down a three. That's a great sign if you're a Texas fan. As we said in the open one, he has success. This Texas team has had success. Big 12, one of the best conferences year in and year out. Last season, Kansas State and Texas preseason seven and eight. We'll take a look at what happened last year. 14 straight for Kansas, Robbie. It's unbelievable what they've been able to do. Seven of the 10 teams in the tournament. Oklahoma State right on the edge of getting in. And then the Elite Eights. So many teams having so much success at the highest level. Who are your picks this year to, to make another run? Who's your dark horse in this league? If you're, if you're going dark horse, I think Iowa State at six is a team that, that can definitely make a run, not just in the Big 12, but also in the NCAA tournament. So much talent there. I think Steve Prohm has done such a nice job. A guy like Cam Lard, right now he's, he's only played in five games, but he's averaging four points and one rebound a game last year, 12 and eight. So really a lot to like about that team, a lot that's coming back. You have the transfer, Mariel Shayak, who's really been terrific. Uh, I think Iowa State is a team that can make noise in this conference. Shayok leads the conference with 20 points per game. You talked about Cam Lard. Lindell Wigginton has only played one game this season. He was spectacular last year. He's a guy that can hit big shots, and Iowa State looks like a team that could have one of the biggest turnarounds in this conference this season. We have an opportunity next week. We'll get to go see them play this Kansas State team in Ames. They got a big game this weekend, though. The Cyclones get an early test against the Kansas Jayhawks, who, Robbie, they're, they're going for 15 straight. It's unheard of. It's an NCAA record. It's unbelievable. Now, it has been an incredible run for Bill Self and the Kansas Jayhawks over that period of time. Just It's, it's really one of the all-time great, I think, records in college basketball. It doesn't get the hype that maybe a UCLA with their national titles does, but 
to be that consistent over a period of time. Look at another conference. Look at the Big Ten. You've had so many different teams win that league over the last 15 years. And the Big 12 is, is no slouch of a conference. There's so many good teams, such depth and balance. And we'll see, do they have enough again, a, a reloading year for Bill Self. Do they have enough in the tank to win it for a 16th year? Mentioned last year, Kansas State, Texas preseason seven and eight. This year, Kansas State picked right behind Kansas. Dean Wade was the preseason pick for player of the year. Obviously, he's out injured right now, but this is a Kansas State team that are expected to do some big things. Off to a pretty good start. Losses to Tulsa and Marquette, both on the road. But in this building, 7-0, and oh, they trail Texas by three as we're back underway. I think interesting here, Chucky. You look at this box score, points off turnovers. Kansas State, all four have been off of Texas turnover is going to be a huge part. Their defense has to create offense for them. Here's Barry Brown. Nothing going for him so far. Nice feed into the corner. Contested three. Sneed rattles it around. That is Xavier Sneed's spot right there. The corner three. How about the dribble penetration, though, by Barry Brown? You have to make him use the ball screen. You let him turn it down. There's no help there. He gets in the paint and finds his guy right in his favorite spot. We're going to take a look. There's that ball screen. If you're Courtney Ramey, you're jumping over. Got to make him use it. And as I said, that is Xavier Sneed's go-to spot right where he wants it. Good offense there for Bruce Weber's team. Side inbound for Texas. Jace Febris gets it into Courtney Ramey. Hayes diving to the basket. Have to watch out for him. Skip pass. Osikowski corner three. Air ball. Dylan Osikowski just has looked a little unsure of himself on the perimeter. And right there, not sure he actually wanted to shoot that three. Coleman pushing the tempo for Texas. There's Ramey. Almost lost it. They've been a little shaky, bit shaky. Yeah, yeah. They just have had a few careless turnovers where it hasn't so much been Kansas State's doing. They've just given the ball away. Coleman, five to shoot for Ramey. In trouble and taken away. Full court pass to Neil Williams and a layup. Well, that is a clinic in how you defend and how you help on dribble penetration. Kansas State in the gaps, and there is just nowhere to go offensively right now for Texas. Sneed hits the deck. He's got to recover quickly. Hayes, top of the key. Ramey inside, and a wild shot, no good. Texas at times, Osikowski looks a little bit unsure of himself sometimes. Texas Tech, it's a big opening win in Morgantown, up three over West Virginia. We welcome you to Manhattan, Kansas. K-State leading Texas early on, nine to seven, but what a game in Morgantown we just saw. Probably a lot more of that to come in Big 12 play. There's so many good basketball teams in this conference, and Texas Tech getting a great road win, one of the tough venues in this conference. Kansas State. Without some of their most important players, Dean Wade out right now. Cam Stokes, a late scratch in the lineup. And Robbie, you told us earlier that the key for them. It's going to have to be not just Barry Brown. You look at him. He is their leader. He's their best defender. But it's got to be a lot of everybody. It has to be some of McCall, McCall May Ween, Xavier Sneed, Cartier Jada, Mike McGurl, guys that have stepped up in situations of injury before. But it's, it's going to have to be a collective effort to replace a guy like Kamal Stokes. There is Cam Stokes on the bench. And some K-State street clothes. Mayween, tough shot. Ripped away by Barry Brown. And on that play, Barry Brown just wanting it a little bit more than everybody else. Get a word from the... Referees on what exactly is happening right now. 
you're going to see the shot there from McCall Maywean. And Barry Brown obviously getting the rebound to wait for the officials to come over. I guess, Chucky, it, it could be the shot clock. It'd be interesting to see where that was. Brown's first basket of the night. Take another look. We're going to see when this shot goes up. Shot clock is running down, and that's exactly what they're looking at. Looks like there, they said yeah. no basket. Yep, they're going to wave it off. So there's a call to shot clock violation. So the shot clock reset at two, and it never hit the rim. Really good officiating by this crew to recognize that immediately and wave that bucket off. Officials tonight, Gary Maxwell, Keith Kimball, Chance Moore. Four Texas turnovers in the last four minutes, and they're still only down two. Early in this game, they were able to get to the rim, and since then, Kansas State's defense has locked in, making it tough. No dribble drive lanes. Great help defense. Right here, great on-the-ball defense by Sean Neal Williams. This is an in-your-face type of defensive team. Cross-court pass, Osikowski looking for help. Febris, that is smothered, and he drops it. Cartier Jada was right there. Really good contest. And Jace Febris, a guy that hasn't shot the basketball all that well in the last three games, just 27%. Six of his last 22 from three sticks it. 0 for 6 two games ago against Providence. A game that they lost by single digits. Could have been the difference, but a big one from him here. We're going to see. Cartier Jada going to be in pretty good shape here defensively. Hand up. Really good contest. Just. Better offense right there, and it's a great sign if you're Texas. Jace Febbers, a guy they need to make shots and open up some driving lanes. When Texas has struggled, they have not shot the basketball well from the perimeter. Osikowski will take a seat. Kamaka Hepa on. Also, Jackson Hayes coming back in for Royce Ham. So an interesting two bigs for Texas right now. The freshman Hayes and Hepa. They have high hopes for these two. Jackson Hayes, a guy that gets better every time you see him, and that doesn't matter if it's weeks go by or days. Just so, so talented. Now a little bit of a zone look from Texas. We expect to see a heavy dose of that tonight. A ween attacking. Might have been tipped by Febris, and the Longhorns are going to try and run. Here comes Coleman. Febris trying to go back to back. Why not? He is a guy, Chucky, that when he sees the first one go in, the confidence just soars, looking extremely confident right there, steps in, and Texas, when they play quickly, they have a great deal of success on the offensive end of the floor. This possession for Kansas State has started a little bit sticky, the ball not moving like they'd like it to. That 2-3 zone really slowing them down. Great flash to the basketball there. McCall Maywean, I think on that last possession, ended up driving the ball when he was open to shoot it right there, makes a decisive play, catch and shoot. And you see Kansas State getting two easy points. Here's Febris looking for an opening. Hepa, the freshman for three. That's exactly what they want from him. And a guy that when you watch it shoot around, he has success shooting the basketball. Has not translated, but really nice pass there, understanding that the shooter is behind you in pick and roll action. Talked a lot about this team struggling to shoot the ball. They're four of seven from three to start. Sean Neal Williams, another freshman. Coleman wraps it around to Hepa. 12 to shoot. Coleman with screen from Hayes. Good defense. Four to shoot, Mitru Long in trouble. To Hayes, has to put one up, no good. That'll end the streak. Great hustle by Ramey, but he was out of bounds. Great start for Texas in Manhattan. It's 16 of 14 over Kansas State.
ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Philip 66, proud sponsor of Big 12 Basketball. Monday on ESPN, we'll have the college football playoff national championship game presented by AT&T at Levi Stadium in Santa Clara, California. It's the Tide and Tigers round four. Number one, Alabama takes on number two, Clemson, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 Pacific, also streaming on the ESPN app. Robbie Hummel, Alabama or Clemson? I, I'm going Alabama. I just think they've been so dominant all year. Tua has had such a phenomenal season at quarterback and I'm going to try to attempt his last name because I know I'll butcher it but just so impressed with not just him but their whole team it's it's really crazy how much talent they have in Tuscaloosa Nick Saban and company just will not go away Texas right now hanging tight in Manhattan they've got a two-point lead how about the early three-point shooting a team that was just shooting 32 percent from three on the season four of seven early See, can they keep it up? Me true long off the rebound. Great play by Coleman to keep it alive. Matt Coleman with the tip out, and Eli Me true long locked and loaded to shoot the basketball. Everything coming really pretty easy in the last three or four minutes for Texas on the offensive end of the floor, and it helps when you make shots. Underneath, tough shot and missed. Me true long getting on the floor for it. Hepa down there as well, and we've got a tie up. Arrow belongs to the Wildcats. The hustle play is so important, especially when you get into conference play. Matt Coleman staying with it, misses the floater, tips it out to Eli Mitru Long, who is right there ready to shoot the basketball. On this side of the floor, if you're McCall Maywean, I, I'd like to see him start making some moves toward the basket. He, he is really shied away from Texas's length and obviously with somebody like Jackson Hayes a shot blocker in there you, you think about him but you got to take that ball right through his chest. Hey, we shot that one off the top of the backboard. Gotta watch out for Jackson Hayes. Coleman handoff to Mitru Long 15 to shoot. Febris. This is where we've seen Texas struggle as this shot clock gets down into 10 and below. Can they generate shots? That's a good look. There's Hayes keeping it alive. Coleman to meet True Long. Trying to catch Kansas State scrambling right now. Good on ball defense from Sean Neal Williams. Meet True Long carries it through the lane. No good. Ahead to Brown. Really a smart play there by Barry Brown. You get in transition, you see what's there, and nice job of, of assessing right there that there was nothing in transition. Coleman along the baseline, floater, too strong. Here comes Brown. Brown slicing, blocked by Hepa, tries to go right back at it. Good defense, Hayes rises above everyone. Barry Brown, just a little out of control. That Texas transition D is set. You've drawn two defenders, got to look for the open man. Coleman on the left wing. Five to shoot, Febris in trouble. Three to shoot, long one for Mitru, long no. J Jada has the rebound. He's gonna be fouled by Coleman, and that'll take us to a break. A great start for the Longhorns. A five point lead over Kansas State, 19-14, 7.02 to play, first half. You don't see fans, this is the moment you truly are. Saturday, Zion and the number one ranked Blue Devils take on Clemson at Cameron Indoor to start conference play for both. Tigers' last win in Durham coming 24 years ago almost. 
to the day, 8 p.m. Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. We all like Duke a lot. Zion Williamson, R.J. Barrett, Cam Reddish. They have a good test, though, in Clemson. Well, it's so interesting in their schedule that they haven't played in two weeks. Yep. I mean, it's almost unheard of in college basketball. We'll be interesting to see how do they shake the rust off when starting conference play against a quality Clemson team. The one loss that Texas Tech has on their schedule right now. A-State trying to come back. Can Kansas State crack this 2-3 zone? They've had some issues. Right there, getting a good look from three, but you've seen their offense really sputter in the half court here. Good defense from Osikowski and a travel. Dylan Osikowski gonna be a tough guy to back down you. Look at what he's listed at, 6'9", 250. Levi Stocker trying to back him down and was just going nowhere. Stocker to sophomore, Osikowski the season vet, senior. Erwin Roach back in for Texas. Also, Jericho Sims down there working the low block. See, King Jericho Sims kind of get out of this slump he's been in. Hasn't scored in two games. And look at last year was a guy that was really coming on, especially with the Mo Bamba injury. Just hasn't been able to find his stride. Talked about confidence potentially being an issue with Sims, and that was interesting what you said at, at shoot around. Why don't you just try to get him an easy basket? How big would that be, do you think, for him? Well, I just think for his confidence, if he could get some sort of you know, layup dunk. And this Texas team so dangerous in pick and roll. So far, Kansas State has done a nice job on the weak side of helping, but Jericho Sims, a lethal option, roll into the rim. Nice back cut from Febris. Contact, count it for Jace Febris. And this Texas staff is going to love that cut. He did that at shoot around. And Darren Horn, the Texas assistant, told him we need to see that tonight. Take a look at this cut, the back door. And Jace Febris, we've seen him knock down an early three, now getting to the basket. His evolution as a player, he's got great size and an ability to finish at the rim, can be a good defender and also a good rebounder. So we'll see how, how does he kind of mature as Big 12 play moves on. Febris three for three, two for two from deep. Kansas State hasn't scored in over five minutes. That drought will continue, and Ramey traveled. Kansas State fortunate there against this Texas press. These, these passes, they, they've got to have some zip on them. You float anything, Texas has the athletes and the length to make you pay. Six turnovers on the Longhorns. K-State's turned it over four times. Here comes Barry Brown trying to break the press. That was a dangerous pass. Yes, it was. Sneed, three. That's a big shot right there. Xavier Sneed cuts the lead to four. Xavier Sneed, a guy that's really extremely talented, but a guy that also has deferred in his career to Barry Brown and Kamal Stokes. But with no Stokes tonight, going to need a lot more of that. Ebris flips it out to Coleman. Febris open for three, kind of mishandled it, and it's off the mark. Neil Williams, oh, wild pass. That's, the, that's the, the right idea, but he gets in there and just a really poor pass. See right here, Xavier Sneed just stepping into it. Jericho Sims, not really a contest. I know, I know that's a deep three, but Xavier Sneed, a guy that can get hot, shooting 37% from three this season. Got to have a hand up. Sneed, 13 points, nine rebounds last game against George Mason. He'll come off right now. Not with the way he's rebounded the basketball. We look at his last four games, averaging a little under 11 a game. And if I'm Bruce Weber, I'm saying, man, if you do that at the four, you should definitely be able to rebound at the three. Guy that's Averaging just five rebounds a game. Coleman looking for space. Back to Febris. Coleman contested three. And no good. Barry Brown has four rebounds on the night. Got to get him going offensively. Nice find to Jada who passes up the three. In tight. And Kerwin Roach on the floor. Hayes on the floor. 
And he flips it to Long, or excuse me, Coleman. Nice move inside. What a finish from Matt Coleman. The body control so impressive and using his size and athleticism to get to the rim, but then adjusting around the shot blocker and getting that ball to the basket. Ian Williams into McGurl. Tough shot, Jackson <laughs> Hayes, not gonna happen. Right to Jada, no good. Hayes almost had an assist after that stuff. Jackson Hayes, volleyball spiking that basketball right there. That's one where, just control the ball. You know, you think about the Bill Russell ability to block shots to your teammate. Speaking of control, nice body control from Roach inside. This is an eight point Texas lead. Kansas State just hasn't been able to generate good offense. I think without Kamal Stokes, they have really struggled against this 2-3. Have to continue to flash guys into the middle, and get quality open looks. I'm not sure that's what they want. Bruce Weber not happy. True Long over to Coleman. Again, getting into the paint. Corner, three for Febris. Timeout, Kansas State. Probably a good call. We'll take it with them. Texas up by eight in Manhattan. Texas starting off this game hot from three. Now starting to get into the paint. How about Matt Coleman? Beautiful finish right here, getting to the basket, and then Kerwin Roach showing off the nice moves with the left. Yesterday, the sports world lost an incredible person. Tyler Trent lost his battle with cancer yesterday, and Robbie made us all Boilermakers, I think. You had a special connection there. You're a Purdue guy, but what an incredible story. It really an incredible story and an incredible person. And I think when you think of Tyler Trent, the way he lived his life, even to the end, you know, just such an inspirational figure and someone that I think we can all learn something from and to go through what he had to go through, just so inspirational. And he was such a big part of that community and at Purdue and in the state of Indiana. Just a, really a, a phenomenal, phenomenal story, phenomenal person, and, and a guy whose legacy is 100% going to live on. Touched everyone across the country in the sports world in a very special way. And sad day yesterday. Texas up by eight on Kansas State here in Manhattan. Just two to play in the first half. Exactly the start the Longhorns had hoped for. This zone has just stifled the Kansas State offense. And Kansas State wants to have some success. It's going to have to be down here. This defense is going to have to create some easy buckets for them. And Barry Brown's a guy that has to get going. 0 of 4 from the field. No points so far tonight. There it is, McGurl. Just a huge basket to stop this run. And McGurl came into this game one for his last 14 from three, shooting just 13% from the three-point line. We'll see. It's been really Mike McGurl, Sean Neal Williams, kind of the unusual suspects for Kansas State tonight. McGurl's season high is just six. He has five so far. Elijah Mitru long to Ramey. Corner Coleman. Got to shoot it long for Mitri Long. He'll say a shot clock violation. Shaka Smart screaming from the sideline. Shoot the ball. Just an overpassing possession right there. Matt Coleman needs to shoot that basketball. Courtney Ramey had drawn two defenders. Drive and kick. Coleman right in the corner. And you want your team to be unselfish, but you can't pass up open shots, especially against a defense as good as Kansas State's. Seventh Longhorn turnover. Kansas State trying to screen the top of this 2-3 zone. Trying to get Barry Brown going downhill. So far, really stagnant in this possession. Wraps it to Snead. Extra pass, corner, Jada, three. 
No, McGurl nearly kept it alive, but Texas will have the basketball. Struggles continue for Cartier Jada. Shooting just 30% from three this year, last year, especially when they lost Kamal Stokes. Kind of made big time plays and big time shots. He's had some good looks tonight, but they just have not fallen. Stopping a bucket here would change the outlook of this game for Kansas State, wouldn't it? I mean, they're only down five points. Yeah. I think right now, if you're, you're Bruce Weber, going to the locker room, if you're just down five, even if you're down seven or eight, you're saying, guys, offensively, we've really struggled. Barry Brown has not scored. Defensively, we've done some good things. Have to stay the course on the offensive end of the floor. Rough start to this possession for Texas. Nearly a travel from Kerwin Roach. Coleman almost turned it over. Mitru Long open three off the mark. Fighting for it, and it goes right back to Texas, and they can hold for the final shot. And that's just Austin Trice and Cartier Jada, the same guy. It's really friendly fire there on that the defensive rebound. Here goes Jada. Nobody to stop him. Left hand, Jada. Chucky. 5 22 here in Manhattan, the Big 12 conference opener for these two teams. Kansas State picked to finish second behind Kansas, who's in search of their 15th straight regular season conference title. That is a record. Texas picked a tie for fourth with TCU. Courtside alongside Robbie Hummel. I'm Chucky Kemp. Robbie, who's the dark horse of this group for you? Who can make a run? I'm going Iowa State. I just think with the personnel they have, so much coming back from last year. Also, you look at Mary Oshayak as the transfer. Been so good scoring the basketball here early on. Give a nice mix of old and new. I think Steve Prum's a great coach. I think Iowa State can be a team that makes a run, not just in this conference, but also in the NCAA tournament. They trail Oklahoma State by one right now at halftime. Wigginton and Shayok, they got 21 for Iowa State. The second half coming right up from Manhattan. Texas up three, 25-22 over K-State in Manhattan, and it was early shooting for the Longhorns that built them a lead. Well, they started off so hot from deep at the seven minute mark in the first half. They were five of 10 from three, now they missed their final six, so we'll see is that fool's gold going towards the second half, but a great sign right there, Jace Febris, eight points in the first half, on track from distance, knocked down two threes from the perimeter. On the flip side of things, for Kansas State, their defense has been so good at creating offense. And when you're struggling in the half court, shooting just 30% from the field, they've gotten 14 of their 22 points off eight Texas turnovers. So we'll, we'll see, it's gonna be an interesting second half. That man right there has to get on track. No points in the first half for Barry Brown. And interesting to look at this Texas offense, when they've shot quickly, they have had success. Now as they've gotten more and more into the half court offense, and credit Kansas State for some of this, they've had struggles. Should be a fun second half here, Chucky. A lot of good basketball still to be played here in Manhattan. Barry Brown 0 for 4 from the field, 0 for 2 from deep, and he didn't get to the line. Texas looking to start this second half hot. Coleman, or excuse me, Roach almost lost it. Here's Coleman. Into the lane, out for Roach. Looking for a quick three, no. Rebound Jada. That doesn't go, but Matt Coleman has had such a feel for the game tonight. He's been able to get into the paint. He's done a nice job of jump stopping. Right there gets Kerwin Roach a wide open three. Good shot that just doesn't fall. Up top, Sneed a little bit too strong, couldn't bring it down. Now he's got to hustle back. Osikowski in the lane, up and under. Batted away, and McGurl has it. How about that transition defense for Kansas State? Got Xavier Sneed laying on the other end of the floor trying to get back. Really impressive the way they were able to stifle that break. Jackson Hayes picks up the foul. That's just his first foul. And we talked to the assistant coach, Darren Horn, and also Shaka Smart. And Shaka said, look, outside of Kerwin, the other guy that's played well, or at least been there, has been Jackson Hayes. He said, we just got to keep him out of foul trouble, but he's had a big impact, especially in our wins. And that foul right there is one that you're going to tell him, hey, we don't need that. Yep. You don't need to dive through the passing lanes. There are certain fouls where you're, he's just going to commit because 
he's trying to defend the rim or, or because something happens. But there, just a silly foul. And how about that? Barry Brown going and making a play for Bruce Weber's offense. And just like that, we are tied at 25. The senior just said, I'll take it. His first bucket of the game, and here's Coleman working on him. Let's see if Barry Brown can get to the line. And that's been a story all year. Last year, five free throw attempts per game, and this year, a little under three. So when you're struggling to score, I'd like to see him use his athleticism and length and get to the basket. Coleman off the mark. Hayes trying to keep it alive right to meet Drew Long. Down to the 15 second mark now. Coleman back to Roach, trying to find penetration right now. Mitru Long gets inside, lost it. They'll leave it with Texas to the dismay of this Wildcat crowd. That shot clock at seven, as that graphic showed to start the half. The Texas offense, the percentages have gone down and down the lower it gets. Roach working on Brown, missed the layup. Jada pushing the tempo. He's in trouble, has to get rid of it. Mayween trying to get to the basket. He got a foul underneath against Ositkowski. What a difference that move is from what McCall Mayween did in the first half. Right there, he lowered his shoulder and just went right through Dylan Ositkowski. Brown trying to go to work, fades away, too strong. Sneed is there, pump fake, and had it maybe tipped by Osikowski. It'll stay with K-State. To me, that, that take by Xavier Sneed, that's a great offensive rebound, but in the back of his mind, he's thinking Jackson Hayes is around here, and he is capable of putting my shot in the stands. Amazing how when there's a shot blocking presence on the floor, you've got opportunities at the rim, and they look like easy shots, but they really aren't. Sneed can't get it to roll. Mayween pulls it down. Will not go. Finally in. K-State's first lead since the 13-minute mark in the first half. Right back at you. Mitru Long. Look who it's set up by. Matt Coleman again, living in that paint. Able to distribute. If I'm, if I'm Kansas State, I, I think this ball should go right back to McCall Mayween. I think he can post hard. He can get another foul on Jackson Hayes. Barry Brown has other ideas. That works too. Your senior going and making a play. They're going to need both those guys here in the second half. Brown, though, able to use Mayween down there under the basket. A foul called. Courtney Ramey back in for the Longhorns. He replaces Kerwin Roach. Barry Brown. Really coming alive here in the second half. Little pick and roll action. Nice jump stop. Loves to stay on balance. Come around, take that turnaround jumper. And Matt Coleman getting in the paint, getting the shooter a wide open look again. Mitru Long trying to slash inside. Ramey gets Sneed up, and oh my goodness, that almost fell. Courtney Ramey, really nice head fake. Get that defender in the air and able to lose his defender. Courtney Ramey, a freshman out of St. Louis, Missouri. Had 10 points in each of the last three games for the Longhorns. 10, 6, and 3 against UT Arlington. percent free throw shooter on the season. Gets the second. Here comes Barry Brown. Five points for him all early here in the second half. Brown over in the corner, bottom left of your screen. Sneed, contested three. Can't get the roll and pulled down by Hayes. 
Jackson Hayes, eight rebounds in this game. Make it nine after that one. Mitru Long blocked. Picked up by Mayween. Here comes Jada. And a blocking foul called on Mitru Long. Barry Brown, known for his defense. But right here, offense is going. We're going to see on the other side here what Barry Brown's about. Kansas State led by Barry Brown, the senior who has done everything at this school. He's a thousand point scorer. He is the all time career steal leader with 211. And we heard about this meeting when they were freshmen at one of the meetings. Coach Weber said, hey, who's my guy? Who's my guy on defense? Barry Brown said, I'm your guy. And Bruce Weber was like, no way. Who's my guy? And Barry Brown came back and said, it's me, coach. I'm your guy. And he has been that guy. Robbie caught up with him at shooter. Mike, what was your reaction to that, Ben? You know, you're a freshman. You're taking this leap of faith. You're saying, I'm going to be the guy. And for coach to say, no, not you, what, what, what was your, I guess, thought process through that? I mean, I, I, after I uh, put my hand up, I mean, I was pretty confident. You know, yeah. I was, you know what I'm saying? I could guard a little bit. That's how I felt. And then when he said no, it's just like, all right, cool. Like, you're not going to. So I looked around, no one else had their hand up still, so I raised my hand again. I was like, I'll do it. Like, no one else wants to do it. I'll, I'll be that guy. Do you have a defensive philosophy of any, of any sort? Is there something you really key in on when you're looking at the guy that you need to stop? Uh, just watch him. Watch him. I'm on it's, it's not that hard. I mean, you, know, you got to have a will to play, want to play defense. Uh, no see, no schemes, no sets. Uh, know what they like to do, what they, how, where their spots are on the floor, where they like to shoot from, where they don't like to shoot from. ISO moves. I, I always watch ISO moves just to, because I mean that's that's just you and him. It's just like just no one else. You and him. You gotta be able to go. Very cool. Appreciate it, man. No problem. Don't you love it, Bob, uh, Robbie? Barry Brown says it's not that hard. <laughs> he just does it. Well, it is that hard because if it wasn't that hard, everybody would do it. And he's been a guy that's really taken on that persona. See right there, the all-time leader in Kansas State history and steals at 211, but also his durability. I mean, you're talking about a guy who's played in 117 straight games for Kansas State. A guy that's been to the Elite Eight, had a great career here, and trying to build on that, take that a little farther, make a Final Four run this year. I think that's maybe my favorite note about Barry Brown. He's got the points, he can score, he's a great defender. He has not missed a game since he got here as a freshman. That's unbelievable. Well, just the wear and tear of a college basketball season, and it really is. The, the fact that he's been such a consistent presence for this team, and hopefully some of that health can wear off on guys like Dean Wade and Kamal Stokes. If they're healthy, it's a dangerous team, but there's 2,000 points sitting over on the bench next to Coach Weber. And yet, K-State with a two-point lead. Coleman trying to go baseline. Good job by Jada to cut him off. Kerwin Roach out to Ramey, back to Roach. Just nowhere to go in this zone, no holes right now. Coleman again toward the baseline. Out to Hepa for to shoot. Coleman slashing, tough, but no good. I mean, that is like a perfect possession of defense right there. That is, there's just nowhere to go. And after a little scrum, it ends up K-State basketball. This is game one. <laughs> saw Texas Tech, West Virginia go down to the wire. This is game one of the Big 12 this season. This is life in the Big 12 yep. right here. There are no off nights. Both these teams playing so hard. You can tell it just means a little more once you get into conference play. Heard Bruce Weber at the end of the shoot around in their huddle say, hey, this is NCAA tournament type of basketball. We got to get ready to go. We got to be tough. Sean Neal Williams back into the game. Xavier Sneed goes off. Right now, both defenses really reigning supreme. Both teams shooting under 31% from the field, and neither has scored in over two minutes. Coleman to the wing. 
Hepa with the screen. Hepa comes open in the corner. Now Kansas State scrambling back into position. Great job, though, to recover. Hepa to Febris off his hands. Turnover. I mean, Texas you, you, is could, you, could, you could make one of those coaching instructional videos on half-court defense with some of these Kansas State possessions. And it's, it's not that Texas hasn't moved the ball. They have. There's just nowhere to go. The help defense in perfect position every time and such a staple of what Bruce Weber does. But I, I have been so impressed. Kansas State down two people and two important people in Dwayne, or Dwayne Wade, <laughs> Dean Wade, and also Kamal Stokes. Over three minutes without a Kansas State bucket. Jada trying to fix it. No, Osikowski rebounds. Texas right at three minutes as well. Maybe to Febris, Osikowski. They're just looking for an open shot. They can't find an opening. Roach is going to put one up. That's a big shot from the senior. Well, that's your senior going and just making a play. And stepping into that shot with confidence, letting it fly. At a time when you haven't scored in over two minutes. Making a play for your team on the road. A tough, tough shot by Kerwin Roach. Texas back up one. McCall Maywean going to work. He's got to go right at. Yep, and that's go. exactly what he's got to do. You've got a guy in Dylan Osikowski, no shot blocking on the floor. Maywean so much more comfortable when Jackson Hayes is not roaming that paint. Dribble handoff. Osikowski driving. Nice back cut. Coleman, he's so active on the offensive end. Just a great cut. I mean, that's Matt Coleman reading his defender and taking advantage. He has been really good tonight. Just making plays for Texas and, and playing intelligently. Six points, four assists, just one turnover of Texas's 10. Barry Brown to the hoop. Count it. Seniors throw a couple punches at each other. How about that matchup? How many times have they seen each other? It's been a four-year deal. These guys both have played such huge roles in their careers. And another Texas turnover. 11 of them for the Longhorns. They still only trail by one. K-State 35, Texas 34. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by State Farm. Talk to an agent today at 800 State Farm. ESPN Plus, home to thousands of live events, over 2,500 college basketball games, international soccer, UFC, and exclusive originals. Download the ESPN app or visit ESPNplus.com to sign up now. I practically live on that thing during the week. A lot of features on there that are fantastic, exclusive to ESPN Plus. Fantastic new addition to the networks. Kansas State up by one on Texas, 11.23 to play. Who can hit some shots down the stretch? Sean Neal Williams with the basketball for K-State. Barry Brown directing traffic. Trying to set up Coleman. Up to Mayween and tipped away by Hayes. Gonna be really tough to get it over the top of him. That's just such a tough pass with Jackson Hayes' length and athleticism. For most bigs, you can make that type of play, but not him. Three from Febris, splashes it home. He has been really one of Texas' best players tonight. I think Matt Collins played great. I think Kerwin Roach has played really well, but Jace Febris bringing the spark offensively. Osikowski and Coleman, hands off Osikowski. Sneed disrupts it. Osikowski slow to get back. Kansas State's got numbers and don't realize it themselves. Sneed trying to go right at Osikowski with a three. Texas dodges a bullet.
Ramey, baseline out to Febris. Got it! It is so tough as a shooter. It's a great drive by Courtney Ramey, but that pass delivered a little high. Jace Febris really shooting the basketball here in Manhattan with so much confidence. Right there. Knocking down shots, making plays for Texas. Jace Febris hot from the perimeter. Has 14 points. See that one more time. Don't go anywhere. This game heating up here, Kansas State. Jace Febris now 14 points, four of six from downtown, and he has been a spark for this Texas offense, knocking down shots from the perimeter, also playing very good defense, but Texas made its run, mostly here off of Jace Febris' hot shooting. And we will see. Texas now leads by five, but something to look for. Kerwin Roach, when he's played well, Texas had success this season. He's also been very good alongside Matt Coleman. Texas guards getting it done. Brown trying to do the same, and he's going to get fouled. You said he needed to get to the lane or to the line, I should say, and he does here. What a physical drive! Really punishing Matt Coleman, using that physicality, getting to the rim, and drawing a foul. That's Coleman's second foul. Clanks one at the line, 74.3% on the season. The senior from St. Petersburg, Florida. All Big 12 second team and all defensive team last year for K-State. Wildcats find themselves down by four. Hayes gives Coleman a screen. Right to Hayes, two hands. Courtney Ramey has played so much better the last four or five games. And how about that quick touch pass right to Jackson Hayes for the dunk? You talked about Hayes' presence on defense affecting things. He's so active, though, setting screens and moving that they have to pay so much attention to him on that end as well. well he's so scary in pick and roll because you understand if your help defense isn't on point, you're looking at a poster. Yeah, he is so long, so athletic. We've talked about Kansas State's help side defenders really all night. They've been very good, but someone you always have to account for. Coleman attacking. Ramey. Hands off to Hayes again. Physical move, and he's going to go to the line for two. How about Courtney Ramey? That's two plays in a row right there. And on that possession, he's given up a good shot, a pretty open three for a nice drive and again getting Jackson Hayes an easy look. Here's that touch pass. That's a really, really tough pass to make. You hook your big guy up, get him a dunk, and get your team some positive momentum on the offensive end of the floor. Hayes misses the first. Jackson Hayes, a freshman from Loveland, Ohio. Leads the team in blocks this season. Came on late in high school. Didn't even start till he was a senior, but he has the bloodlines. His dad, an NFL tight end, actually a coach for the Bengals now. Mom was a stud player of the year at Missouri in the Missouri Valley Conference at Drake. Average over 50 points a game for her high school team. Man, <laughs> that's 50 points a game is insane. Talk about some good genes. Seven points to spread for Texas. Jada looking for Brown. He got tripped up. Corner three for Barry Brown. Going to go out of bounds. It'll stay with Kansas State. It is a battle down there on the defensive glass. Bodies flying. That's Big 12 basketball. We come down the stretch. We'll see which offense can execute better in the half court. Both of these teams have been prone to droughts. We've seen that tonight. Who can execute better down the stretch, though? McCall may wean. Big shot from the mid-range over he, Jackson he Hayes. He can do that. You know, he can step out and shoot that basketball even to the three-point line. 
Not sure Jackson Hayes understood that right there. Texas went zone, and McCall Mayween knocking down a huge shot for his offense. Mayween has 10, not necessarily as efficient. There's Jackson Hayes at the rim. And that's the first breakdown in that help side pick and roll defense. Jackson Hayes, we talked about it, rolling to the rim untouched. Nice job throwing that thing to the rim and letting him go get it. Hayes, seven points, a career high, 10 rebounds. Brown to the hoop, lost the handle. Ramey saves it to Hayes. Corner, Osikowski trying to go to the hoop. He's got his eye on Ramey here. He's going to be fouled, and he'll go to the line for two. Texas, where did this team come from? They're up seven on the road at Kansas State. Seven to play. Texas, their offense getting going. Jackson Hayes going to be used as a roller here in the screen and roll. Take a look at Xavier Sneed in the corner. He is guarding Dylan Osetkowski. This ball screen going to occur up top. He has to be to the basketball, up the lane, and you got to get contact and impede Hayes' roll. Here you see kind of a half effort, half tag. They throw the ball right to the rim, and when you're dealing with an athlete like a Jackson Hayes, and you're guarding really right now a non-shooter, a guy in Dylan Osikowski who's not shooting the basketball with a lot of confidence. you got to be in, and then you got to get out. And right there, Xavier Steed never in, and you give up a dunk. Texas up by seven. Their largest lead tonight is eight, and Osikowski gets the roll to make it eight. In Manhattan, Kansas, alongside Robbie Hummel, I'm Chucky Kempf. Andy Jacobson, the producer. Jocelyn Meyer directing things for us. Osikowski gets them both. It is a nine-point Texas lead. Robbie, what does Kansas State have to do offensively to be able to get some points on the board and make this comeback? Well, I think right now you've got to lean on your senior. You've got to look at Barry Brown, and obviously you're not playing without Kamal Stokes, and you're not playing without Dean Wade. So two guys that have scored a ton of points on the bench, but I think it's Barry Brown, and I love to see him be aggressive. I want to see him get to the basket, try to make a play. Here's Sneed. Going to work on Osikowski, blocked, and they'll get a blocking foul on Osikowski. You mentioned Kamau Stokes. He had three threes, or back-to-back -back threes with under six minutes to go in the game against George Mason, and then he hit another one under the 130 mark. I mean, he really bailed them out in a game where they played bad late. The first class in Kansas State history to have three seniors eclipse the 1,000-point mark. It was a special group. Well, the last four games, he's just made so many big plays, and you think about all those points sitting on the bench. That, that's a lot, especially to ask your team to win here in Big 12 play. Sneed, big time three. The lead back to six. Got to get this crowd behind him. To get it done here on the defensive end of the floor. That's what they've hung their hat on the last two seasons. But Kerwin Roach has other ideas. And that's another senior making a play on the road. And really taking this crowd out of it once again. Roach into double figures with 10. Jada fouled by Ramey. And that's going to send Jada to the line in the one and one. That's a freshman mistake right there. You're trying to run as much clock as you can. And I get you want to be aggressive defensively. I get you want to make the ball handler uncomfortable, but you just cannot give away free points. Got him, misses. Sneed has the rebound. Got around Jackson Hayes. Brown trying to set up the offense. Sneed, long three, no, tipped around, and Febris runs it down. Here comes Hayes. Ramey shielding his defender. Spins inside, almost lost it. Hayes on the ground, saves it to Ramey, eight to shoot. 
Roach. Floater, really tough shot. Hayes is there, what a play, on his way down. Well, the hang time there is so impressive. He's a great athlete. You just wonder, how do you lose him coming to the offensive glass? You see the rotation, that's how McCall Maywean going for the shot block, or the, the block shot. When that happens, you gotta have guards cracking down on bigs, nobody home. Jackson Hayes. And a nice job of just getting right to the basket and making a play. Lead stretched to 10. Into Mayween. Hayes not going to happen. Jackson Hayes stuffs him. And that, that's a bucket. I mean, the way he McCall Mayween posted up right there, the position he had. Against most centers in this league, that's going to be a basket. But Jackson Hayes, if you give him any type of space, he's going to block that shot. Debris to Coleman. Thought about the three on Brown. Here comes the screen. Coleman looking into the corner for Ramey. Three to shoot. Ramey got it. Texas by 13. But again, it's Jackson Hayes' role. He is a, really attracting so much attention as a roller. Cartier Jada has to be in on that. And you're giving up something. Talk about a big time three pointer from the corner. Five to shoot. Brown falls down in the lane. Turnover. How about Texas's defense? Just locking in here. Kansas State getting extremely stagnant. Not much movement there. And Barry Brown. You're driving the ball against a set defense. There's nothing there. K-State hasn't scored in three minutes. It's a 7-0 run for Texas, and the Longhorns are six of their last seven. Febris in the corner, taken away by Sneed. McGurl didn't see it, though, and it's rained down by Coleman. Two to shoot for the dagger. Got it! What a sequence that is. Kansas State gets a deflection, has an opportunity to go the other way. Mike McGurl doesn't see the basketball, and Jace Febris has been terrific tonight, making the biggest shot of the game right there. Jada getting in the lane, and he will be fouled. Texas taking control here late. About Jackson Hayes showing off the length and the athleticism, and then two major league threes for this Texas offense. The first one, Courtney Ramey, and then the second one, Jace Bebris, staying hot. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Philip 66, proud sponsor of Big 12 basketball. It's been a roller coaster year for the Texas Longhorns. They started 5 0. They beat number seven, North Carolina. And then it was three straight losses, two of them at home one to Radford, one to Shaka Smarts, former club VCU. They've won three of their last four coming into this one. And Robbie, they're taking care of K State in Manhattan. What a performance from Texas. Well, well just a tough team tonight. And they've come on the road, and obviously, you're going against a depleted Kansas State team. No Dean Wade. No Kamal Stokes, but still, regardless of that, you go on the road in conference play, you get a win, it doesn't matter. It's a great win for this Texas ball club, and it's just so impressive to see the way that they've come out here. Guys have made plays. Jace Febbers has been terrific tonight shooting the basketball. He's hit five threes. And how about the young kid, Jackson Hayes? I mean, every time you see him, he, he's a better player than he was before, and I think he's still figuring out really how to play and what he needs to do to be a great player, but man, what a talent sure this, if they can hold on, will be a win shock. A smart looks to to say, hey, this is how good you can be. Yeah, I mean, the sky is the limit for this kid. And you see him at shoot around, he really has a pretty nice stroke shooting the basketball as well. Now, he's not there yet doing that in games. But just defensively and the way he can attract attention as a roller and a rebounder and a guy that can score off dump downs, he's a really good player right now. Think about what he's going to be in a couple years. 
career high 30 minutes already. Another thing, we're talking to Darren Horn, who works with the bigs for Texas. One of the things he said, we got to keep him on the floor, got to keep him away from those silly fouls. He only has one foul tonight. It was one that probably shouldn't have been, but Febris again. 20 for Jace Febris. Again, that screen and roll action. He's got a guy that's rolling to the rim that attracts so much attention. You're going to get open looks. And it's just about Jace Febris shooting it with confidence and knocking it down like he's done tonight. Career high for Febris, the sophomore from Houston, Texas. Maywin gets two back for K-State. Texas is just trying to wind this one down. Have to handle the basketball if you're Texas and expect run and jump. Tight defense here. Run this shot clock down and get a good shot at the end of the shot clock. Osikowski, just the cherry on top. Texas has gotten it done. They're now shooting 50% from three. And you think about when this team makes shots from the perimeter, They've got guys that, get the, that can get in the paint. You, you've got Matt Coleman. You've got Kerwin Roach. They are more than capable. You open those driving lanes, this Texas team is going to be tough to beat. Good one on Saturday. Zion and the number one ranked Blue Devils take on Clemson at Cameron Indoor. Start a conference play for both teams. The Tigers last win in Durham. 24 years ago, almost to the day, 8 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. We'll be watching that one. Always fun to watch Zion and company. RJ Barrett. Special talent, and who knows? But he might have the top three picks in the draft next year. Re really could, and I'm looking forward to seeing R.J. Barrett, Marquise Reed square off. You got the top and third scorer in the ACC. Marquise Reed coming off a phenomenal game against the left coast. 26 points, six rebounds, five assists. So should be interesting. Two weeks off is a long time to not play in a college basketball season. Duke gonna have to shake off some rust. We'll see how you, you do that against a conference opponent. That, that's easier said than done. All eyes on that one on Saturday. And Wayne hits it. It is a 17-point lead for Texas. Let's I want to put something in perspective, Robbie. You made a really good comment at shoot around, I thought, when we were talking about the expectations surrounding this Kansas State team. And even at 10 and 2, I think people thought. They should be a little bit better, especially offensively. And you said, look, people forget the process to get to the Elite Eight. Now, right. what did it, you, you didn't it just wasn't get all, there. Yeah. It wasn't like you went on a straight trajectory up to the Elite Eight. You, you really had to go through some ups and downs. You, know, you look at the way they've shot the basketball. We see Jace Febris continue to be on fire. But the way they shot the ball last year, it, it wasn't great at times. They really struggled offensively. They are a defensive-oriented team. And this year, they've had some injuries they've had to deal with. And... They still are a team that I think could make noise. It, just because they've lost some games that maybe you didn't think they were going to, it, it's a long year. You forget what you were at times when you have some success. And Bruce Weber's you know, as good a coach as any in this league. He's going to go back to work, and as they get healthy, they can make noise. This team is a team that knows what it takes, and I have no doubt that they're going to bounce back. And like you said, I, I think that this is, I'd be shocked if they were outside the top three in the Big 12. And it's a tough conference, but this is an experienced team. If they can get Stokes and Wade back healthy, and I think Stokes is close. I think he's going to be back quicker than Wade, obviously. But when they get those guys back, this is an absolute tough team. There is Dean Wade, the fantastic senior. Not a great timetable on his return. Kind of more of what can you do on the injured foot when this, they kind of talked about it. Once he's painless, they move on to the next step. So the process for him, certainly frustrating. Saturday noon Eastern on ESPN2 and the ESPN app. While the FCS championship game between the number three Eastern Washington Eagles and number one North Dakota State Bison. Bison defending champs. They've won the title six of the last seven years. North Dakota State's coach, Chris Kleiman, took the Kansas State job. This is his final hurrah at North Dakota State, replacing the legendary Bill Snyder. Kansas State fans, I'm sure, excited and also curious as to what the next era will bring. Always interesting when you follow a guy that's a legend. And obviously, Bill Snyder and his career here at Kansas State. He's been a guy that's been coaching here since the late 80s. He's an institution in football here in the state of Kansas. So it should be fun to watch. 
Kind of what they say, right? In every sport at every level, you don't want to follow the guy. It's always a lot tougher. So <laughs> right. it'll be fun to watch Chris Klein and what he does with that football program. Texas is just going to let the clock tick. What a performance from them. Shot the ball 48% from the field, but 52% from beyond the arc, Robbie. And it's not realistic to think that they could keep that up, but coming in, I think we're at 32%. 20% higher. I thought that at times tonight, the Texas offense was much better than we've seen it all season. Now, Kansas State also at times really made it difficult, and that's a credit to them. But the basketball did move from side to side. I didn't feel like it stuck as much as it did against Providence and some of their losses. So we'll see. What is the evolution for this team offensively? Can they continue to make shots from downtown? That's, that's really going to be the question. Shaka Smart going to empty the bench a little bit right here. Talks to a couple of his younger guys. Two walk-ons, Drayton Whiteside and Blake Nevins is going to come into the game. Sports Center after Wednesday night hoops. And after the buzzer with Stan and Neal, they'll take you inside the amazing rookie year of Luka Doncic, plus the keys to the Chargers-Ravens rematch and a look at the three college football playoff matchups between Alabama and Clemson Sports Center, 1 a.m. Eastern, 10 Pacific on ESPN and the app. If you're a basketball fan, you've got to like Luka Doncic. Well, I think just looking at before he got to the NBA, he won every major award and every title he could in Europe. Now, at the same time, he's 19 years old and averaging 19 a game in the league. That, that is, that's impressive. He has been spectacular. Got in Dallas. Texas. What a win, a dominating second half for Texas. Your thoughts, Robbie? Well, I just think you look at what Texas was able to do in the second half offensively, shooting 61% from the field, 9 of 11 from three. This is a great win for Shaka Smart's team. Way to get off on a good start here going into Big 12 play. Texas takes down K-State 67-47. For Robbie Hummel, I'm Chucky Kemp. Up next, Utah State versus Nevada from Reno.